Hey guys, I'm back. We're talking cauliflower today for my must-haves to grow in your garden. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so I have this huge, well, it, the leaves are huge, I will say. The head is not as huge as um, the regular cauliflower. This is baby cauliflower that I'm growing um, in my rice garden, as you can see. Um, I am super pumped about this because I have been growing for a few years now, as you guys know. Um, I have never, ever, ever, in the eight, 10, whatever <laughs> plus years I've been growing, fruits and veggies, I have never successfully grown, grown any type of cauliflower or broccoli. I am super excited and impressed. Um, I really wish that I could take all of the credit, but I can't because I really think it was um, due to my smart garden, my rice garden. So um, it really did all the work. I am either, either way, I still feel like I've got some cool points for doing this on my own and um, getting it to this point. So um, I believe from what I understand, it grows about to this size. They say to about the size of a softball. So from my old PE days, if I can remember, it's, it's about the size of a softball. It could probably be a little, grow a little bigger, but um, I was just so excited to have it um, and get started and um, see what I could do. I've got two here, so you can see this one is a lot smaller. It's a teeny guy, um, and that's one thing I wanted to mention before we get started is that, um, or actually it'll just kind of be a part of my rundown. Um, when you're growing, I almost never thin out my um, seedlings. Uh, <laughs> um, I've always pretty much had uh, pretty good success without doing that. Sometimes I do pick things off as I could see them growing or um, different things happening, but this one I totally missed because it was being eclipsed by, as you can see how big these leaves are, it was uh, virtually being eclipsed by the, the bigger leaves. And so I just happened to be looking one day and I'm like, oh my God, there's another head. And um, to my surprise, they had two, as you can see, two separate stems. So um, I had two <laughs> cauliflowers, actually a third one, which is back there that, that really never did anything because it was just it was just too much. So I will say that when you are growing these, that you make sure that um, as they do start to grow and get bigger, that you either thin them out or uh, find that way that I've, um, it's in one of my videos, I'll probably do another one where I show you how to separate seedlings and get, get more bang for your buck, you know, because usually they load these up with maybe four or five seeds and you can spread them out and put them in other seedless pods or the um, rapid rooters or whatever that you can, that work well in the rice garden and um, just have multiple heads. Again, you do want to spread them out. If you are growing them in your rice garden, definitely on the bottom level of your family rice garden. Um, and I would say, I would, as you, you can see how they have the three different trays, I would do one in each tray, like seriously, and probably nothing else. But you could probably squeeze something in the very front of it, but um, it's uh, <laughs> it will get eclipsed by these, these huge leaves and this is this is nothing there were I have a few other leaves here that um broke off well that's a little damaged but um still but they, they broke off as I was um harvesting it so again just make sure that you have plenty of space for these guys because it's you know even though it's a nice little small head it's it's pretty big so I'm excited about um what I can do with this so one of my favorite things about uh growing cauliflower is that Number one, it's low in calories, but it's also high in vitamins like C, K, and B6. It's also very high in minerals like manganese, potassium, and phosphorus. Cauliflower is also high in fiber, which is great for overall health and digestion alone. So keeping things flowing down there. Um, and, and we all know that fiber, a high fiber diet is great to lowering the risk for heart disease. In addition to all those key benefits, cauliflower is a great source of antioxidants that reduce inflammation and protect our cells from free radicals. One of the most exciting things for me anyway that I've researched about cauliflower is that it could aid in weight loss. 
So, um, you know, cauliflower is a really great low carb uh, option or substitute. Um, I'm thinking cauliflower rice instead of regular rice or flour. Um, cauliflower pizza is pretty dang good. Um, and again, as I mentioned, it's high in fiber, which makes you feel fuller faster. So you can eat um, other things or you can eat more of it. Cauliflower is also said to be made up of 90% of water. So that's pretty amazing for this big guy here. 90% of this is water. So it's kind of like lettuce. I always usually say, oh, I'm eating my water. <laughs> so um, you can just chow down on this guy. So whether you're using it um, in like a ranch dipping sauce, you can probably go a little bit more with the ranch or some of the, the other heavy dressings because there's really not much to the cauliflower that will add on to the pound. So that's so exciting for me. Now on to growing these guys. Um, it could take about seven to 14 days for your cauliflower to germinate and up to 80 days for you to harvest. So this, this guy was done in maybe I'd say maybe just over 60 days. Before you harvest it, the head, or I've seen it called the curd, you want to make sure that it's about the size of a softball, at least for the baby cauliflower. It's going to be about like this size that you want to cut it and um, make sure that it's nice and compact and firm. Um, and that, that just lets you know that it's ready to get going. Um, if, I think if you let it grow any longer, it will start to get flowers. So we don't want that happening. I just basically got like a serrated knife and cut the base. This thing is, this stem is very hard to cut. So it was really dense and thick. So um, again, probably all those fibrous bands in there and that nice good fiber that helps us with our weight loss and digestion. So, um, but yeah, so I harvested this at about 60 days and um, I'm ready to, uh, to get going cooking and doing um, some, fun, some fun recipes with this guy. Now, as you know, I grow this inside in my rice garden, but you can also grow this outside or you can even start them indoors and um, transplant them outside, especially in the cooler temps. You do wanna wait before the first frost, maybe by a few weeks uh, when the temperature is between 70 to 75 degrees. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, spacing is a huge issue that you want to make sure even whether you're indoors or outdoors, you want to make sure that they're spaced far enough away so that those big leaves aren't shielding your other, uh, other plants or other cauliflower. One quick note uh, that I forgot to mention about um, starting them indoors, even though the temperature is not too hot, 70 to 75 degrees when you're going to be planting these um, in the fall, which is a great time, um, early fall. Um, you do still want to make sure that you're hardening them off. And that just basically means that if you're starting them with artificial light, like I have here, um, you do want to make sure that, that you're taking them outside a few hours at a time. Uh, you know, as much as our engineers try to make LED lights just like sunlight, it's not sunlight. So um, you want to make sure that it's going to adapt well to that transition so what i would do is like for a day i take it out for two hours the next day maybe another hour adding on to that sometimes people can take a week um depending on what what i'm growing or what it looks like as i'm hardening them off um it can take me maybe five days or whatever again start off with two hours four hours, maybe just adding on two hours at a time. Uh, I'm just looking at how the leaves are doing and making sure that it's not um, getting any type of stress or anything like that. Um, I assume that these guys can even be grown in pots outside as well because they, they are so small. I used to grow in smart pots outdoors when I um, was living in a home. I'm in an apartment now, so this is really a great option for me um, to, to have my indoor hydroponic rice garden as well as um, I could even do it on my balcony. Although my balcony doesn't have much sunlight, um, you know, either way, I don't know that this guy needs that much harsh sunlight because again, it's a cold weather crop. So it will do pretty well in the fall where that sun is not as harsh. Um, again, I'm just pretty biased to growing indoors where I don't have to fight with the pest and figure out temperature and all that fun stuff or not so fun stuff. So these guys are very prone to aphids, which I despise, as well as uh, the cabbage worms. And so what happens is, is not at night, you get like these white moths that lay their eggs on your um, cabbage or your cruciferous vegetables like cauliflower. Um, and um, they get like these little green, little teeny little worms and uh, 
They are so annoying and where you'll start seeing little holes being eaten out. Maybe not even just holes, but they just start getting, your leaves get devoured and they eat them very quickly. You can also look and then you'll see like little dark green or little black little balls. That's their little poop that they're <laughs> emitting. They're just like eating, like they're like little babies. They just eat poop and sleep. I don't even know if they sleep, but they, <laughs> they eat so much and they're just like, they're ravenous and they just go like crazy, just like aphids. And um, aphids, you'll see like these little green, little teeny little bugs on them. Um, again, you'll start seeing your leaves just being devoured. Sometimes I've seen them eaten down to just literally the vein, the vein of the leaves. Like there was no pliable or no um, soft fleshy <laughs> leafy part left. So these guys can go pretty quickly. So, and I say, even as I say that, um, I'm not completely immune to aphids because I do come in the house. I go outside. I have had aphids once in my rice garden. Um, and I'm pretty sure it was because I had, I used to put my potted plants in here and I just did not sequester it long enough. And I'm pretty sure that that's how it got into my house or even my dogs at the time. So, um, there's different ways, but you're a lot, lot less prone <laughs> to having to deal with pests in your home when you're, when you're growing in your home. So now when you want to store this guy, you're going to, um, I would pull off most of the outer leaves, um, but keep it dry. Um, and it'll last for maybe not very long. You want to keep it. You don't want to cut it until you know you're going to eat it within three to five days because you want to be able to maintain the flavor as well as the nutrient density. So you want to be able to get all those nutrients that are still in here um, while you're eating it. So that's kind of the whole purpose. Um, the leaves, everything can be eaten, uh, the stem, the leaves. I've even heard of people making cauliflower leaf chips, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. You can also take the cauliflower, cut it up. You know how people just like to dip it in, as I mentioned earlier, like a dressing. Um, I also love this with, um, dipped in a little bit of ghee. It's kind of like a clarified butter, but uh, sprinkling it with turmeric and uh, ginger and putting it in the oven, roasting it in the oven. Um, anyways, lot, lots to do with this. You can also I've, I've make cauliflower pizza crust, as I mentioned earlier. That is very daunting, which I probably will never do, but it's a process of steaming it and cooking it, getting all the the, uh, the fluid out, all the water out. Again, 90, 90%, 92%, I believe, of water <laughs> in this guy so it's a lot it's a it's a whole process it's pretty amazing um but not something that i <laughs> care to dive into but um but that's a, another cool option for uh consuming storing and consuming it um oh back to storing it make sure that you put it in a bag that's kind of like has holes you don't want it in a sealed bag with no airflow um again keeping it dry you know there's nothing really in inside that you really need to rinse this guy off and I've also heard some people who when they're gardening outside they really don't like to rinse off their fruits and veggies either um, unless you see something on it um, because like the the stuff that's on it you're kind of like washing off or cleaning off some of the uh, uh, the, the healthy part or the, the nutrients or I, I forget what it is maybe not nutrients but there's there's something on here that's beneficial hopefully somebody can um, put something in the comments and kind of correct me on that. Um, but I, I have heard, um, uh, th that one guy, I forget his name, but growing your greens, I simply adore him. And, um, he just mentioned that it's just, it's has a lot of health benefits to just eat vegetables just as is. So again, if you do, if you're so inclined, if you do feel the need to rinse it and clean it off, I would say to let it dry for a bit and, um, then you can store it put it in the crisper in your fridge because you, you just don't want to get any mold on it. It'll start to wilt a little bit. Um, so you just want it to be nice and fresh and to where, where uh, it should be for you to eat it. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, again, I'm just like, I don't even want to put this down. It's like my, my bouquet. <laughs> I just, it's just so pretty. Again, it has just taken me so long to make this guy. So, but um, anywho, if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and um, any comments that you may have. Um, I always welcome your comments, anything that I may have gotten wrong or uh, mixed up, please feel free to um, correct me. I, I love this gardening community. Like everybody is just kind of shares ideas and um, things that work for them. If there's something that works better for you that I haven't mentioned, feel free to mention that as well. Um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I've been posting a couple pictures as 
I've been progressing, so check that out. Um, and if you've been growing cauliflower, whether in your rice garden or outdoors, go ahead and share that with me as well. Um, on my Instagram channel, uh, or my Instagram page, <laughs> this is my YouTube channel, which you should definitely subscribe to and hit that notification bell so that you can be made aware of all of my future videos, which I'm continuing to make. So at any rate, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Again, thank you, thank you so much for all of your kindness and your support. It goes a long way. Be kind to one another. And as always, here's wishing you great eats and happy gardening. Take care, guys.